Snackers. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm one of the managers of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. And welcome to episode 65 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your 10-minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff. And uh, today we're actually having a returning guest, uh, Christopher Vandermaid, uh, joined us in episode seven and talked about SecureX. Uh, but today he's uh, joining us to talk about threat hunting. And so, Christopher, if you don't mind introducing yourself real quick, and then we'll jump right into it. Thanks, Matt. So, uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Christopher Von Armada. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet, and I focus specifically on security. Uh, and I'm uh, very happy to be back uh, again. <laughs> Glad to have you, bud. Um, Good to have you so, back. Yeah, we, we would love having return guests. Um, so threat hunting, um, can you kind of put that in context for us and, and help our audience understand what that actually means from kind of a, a technical aspect? Sure. Yeah, so probably if you're in an audience and you're going to ask everyone in the audience, you're going to get as much different answers as the people in the in the room. Um, but basically, to set the stage, it's, it's the process of proactively and iteratively searching through environments uh, to detect advanced threats that evaded your existing security solutions. So just uh, it's a long sentence, but basically you're, you're looking for someone that might have infiltrated your environment, which your security tools, which you have in place, did not catch. So you're, kind of looking after the fact. And um, yeah, this is something what more advanced organizations usually do. And it's what smaller organizations aspire to do. Um, so today I wanna talk about how to make it a little bit more approachable. Awesome, you know, you know, Matt, when, when my definition of threat hunting in my head was a picture of Looney Tunes and Daffy Duck like going and shooting. That's kind of like the. the you mean Elmer, about. Fudd, Elmer yeah. Fudd going for Daffy Duck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's duck hunting season. <laughs> we should probably have that on the video. Yeah, I don't think we can do that. Um, so, uh, Christopher, uh, just. Yeah, before you jump into to what you're going to show us, so we have things like, uh, you know, DNS blocking and, and allow lists and things like that. And we have malware detection and all that stuff. But you're uh, just so I'm clear, we're getting into something has gotten past those things. It's gotten through our endpoint. Um, it's potentially gotten through our endpoint uh, security. It's gotten through our DNS protection. It's gotten through um, our malware detection. And then now we're, we're setting up a situation where we're trying. Are, are we going to be automating how we look for these threats downstream? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and it's a good point because obviously when, yeah, I work for Cisco, we all work for Cisco, then it's difficult sometimes to say like the tools we, we make like Umbrella and, and Cisco Secure Endpoint, they will never be 100% secure or they will never block 100% mm -hmm. of all attacks. There will always be zero day attacks which might slip through the cracks somehow. Um, so those those attacks is what we're after. Well, let us see how we can uh, automate these threat hunting activities. Sure. All right. So and what you can see is the the um, the SecureX dashboard. And I actually look back at our previous episode, and uh, I also talked about SecureX. So this is quite nice. I showed there a little bit how to get started and what you can do. Now we're looking at a little bit more of an advanced uh, application of this. So there, there's a built-in incident uh, manager into uh, SecureX. And what I'm doing with my automated uh, workflows is I'm actually storing all of the information that we're finding from the threat hunts into an incident. And here we see a little bit more information on that incident uh, where we're, for example, detecting multiple security events into one incident. Well, what is powering all of this? You already see your SXO. Uh, so that stands for SecureX Orchestration, um, which is a tab in SecureX. So SecureX um, has multiple uh, yeah, uh, functions. And this is an, an, an orchestrator, which I also talked about in the previous, um, um, previous episodes. And it allows you to do drag and drop automation, basically. Now, what I'm doing specifically in this case is I'm, I'm using Twitter 
um, and specifically the hashtag OpenDeer. Uh, I'm not sure if people are aware of that uh, hashtag. You can look for it. Um, we're using the Twitter search API specifically to for that OpenDeer hashtag, and I needed to URL encode the hashtag, obviously. Uh, but we're looking specifically for that one. And this is what uh, uh, security researchers use to publish their findings. So this is like the freshest of freshest malware. Um, and, and a tweet can include like um, a new IP address of a command and control server uh, that uh, attackers might be using to, uh, to exfiltrate data to, or a new file hash of a specific type of malware which might have infiltrated uh, your application infrastructure. So what I'm doing is I'm looping through all these tweets using the Twitter API. And in a combination, I'm using the, uh, the threat response API, as you can see here, for each tweet. Uh, so I'm looping through the tweets and I'm looking for these uh, indicators. So IP addresses, file hashes, domain names, you, you name it. Um, and what I'm doing then is I'm searching SecureX, all the con connected modules, to see, hey, is there a device or a host? Um, so it could be a user or it could be a host where an application is running on. Um, is one, did one of them come in contact with one of those indicators? And if so, I probably want to know about it because someone just tweeted that this is bad and someone in my environment yeah, I had contact with that indicator. So what I'm doing then is creating those these incidents, and I'm uh, doing this per per host or per target, as we call it in the security world. And um, so I'm storing multiple events into one incident here. Obviously, the goal of this is um, automating this whole process of finding these indicators and doing the threat hunting using the SecureX APIs. So uh, you don't have to do anything, just investigate these incidents. And then just wait for the notifications to come back, which you know we're not gonna sit here all day yeah. and look at dashboards, so we might as well uh, let, let uh, people know when there's something worth acting upon, right? And, and I love the fact that uh, when, we're, when we're, we're doing all of this in the orchestration part of SecureX, right, which requires pretty much zero code, Right. So, you know, and I think we've mentioned this on our last episode, too, where you don't actually have to know any coding to automate, you know, with NCQRX. You got this orchestrator where you can just drag and drop and do your magic, you know. You, you got to know how to use REST APIs. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's fair. <laughs> you need to understand the logic, but you don't need to know the actual syntax of a line of code, which is yeah, very helpful and makes it more approachable and yeah, more scalable okay. because of that. Um, Christopher, unfortunately, we're coming up against time, um, and, but I presume that our snackers out there might want to uh, get started with uh, threat hunting with SecureX. Do you have any suggestions on some uh, content or learning materials they can check out? Yeah, sure. So probably um, I'm, I can give you a giant list of URLs, but this one is easy to remember. developer.cisco.com slash SecureX. So from here, you can find your way into whatever you want to do. Um, and obviously, the, the workflow that I just showed you, you can import as well, and you can find it through this page as well. Uh, thank you, Christopher, and, and thank you all snackers for joining us for yet another episode of DevNet Snack Minute. And before we let you go, oh. Christopher has a bunch of sessions at Cisco Live. So if you haven't, if you don't get the chance to, you know, to play around with this, join some of his chess sessions. I'm sure he's going to cover all of that. Yes, he will. Thank you, snackers. Hey. Awesome. Thank you, Snackers. Thanks, Christopher. Bye.